There is an ancient proverb among the Ultima of Somerset. Those who can, do. Those who can't, play Max Hawk. Oh yeah? Well I can summon four friends. My damage is awesome. And my rotation is so easy that I can perform it flawlessly whilst vigorously romancing your mother. Hi, this is Khan from Ninja Pulls with a question. Why aren't more of you playing Magic a Sorcerer? It's strong, it's fun, and it's easy. Yeah, I said it, Magsork is easy. I mean, you can hit 127k with other classes, but you'll have to work much harder. Sork gets us there with a static rotation, which is nuts. And you can push to 130 if you want, but I'm gonna show you a setup that keeps things really simple so that anyone who can push two buttons per second can replicate it. You just need good stats, good weaving, and two simple tricks to help you, which I'll cover in this video. Before we get to that, every damage class has its pros and cons, and Magicka Sorcerer is no different. So let's remind ourselves, starting with the negatives. It has limited cleave. I'm not talking about simple AoE damage, Sork is amazing in trash, actually. But in boss fights, we're a laser beam, not a flamethrower like Necromancer or Warden, which can melt secondary targets without really trying. That's not always a problem, but it can be. The cast time on Crystal Fragments is a pain if you need to block cast. Think of Assembly General Hard Mode or Yandir Hard Mode, where unblocked hits can one-shot you. You'll either need to stop damage for a moment to block, or use an instant cast ability, whether it's necessary or not. You can work around this, but yeah, it's a drawback now and then. Those are the main negatives, but I suspect the third reason we don't see more of this class in late game content is a kind of snobbery. Sorcerer is nice and easy for beginners, and very popular in the early game. The pets and energized passive also make it perfect for heavy attack builds, great for players who don't want to get too deep in the combat system or spend too much time fussing about their damage. It's also pretty stable, patch after patch, so it never gets that underdog surge where a neglected class suddenly gets super popular because everyone thinks it's meta or whatever. That just doesn't happen to Sorcerer, so it's easy for it to look kinda mainstream and vanilla by comparison. But if you think about it, there's nothing wrong with a class which gets more beginners into the game, and whose power doesn't yo-yo up and down with every new chapter. These are good things but it gives Sorcerer a bit of a rep as the training wheels DPS class, the class that your dad plays. Maybe I'm wrong about this, but I don't think so. There's a rich history of mocking Sorks in ESO, and as a Nightblade main, I totally get that. It's fun, especially when your friends play Mag Sork. But really, this reputation is not accurate or deserved. Being accessible doesn't make it weak or boring. There's plenty of challenge here if you want to push it to the limit, and there are other good reasons to play this class, especially right now. Which brings us to the pros. We provide minor prophecy. Magicka DDs and healers typically use major prophecy to raise their crit chance, and topping that up with the minor version does them a big favor. The single target damage is top tier. That laser beam I talked about is pretty high powered, it's also bursty, which is ideal for short fights or when switching targets. Losing four ability slots to the pets keeps the rotation simple, which frees you up to focus on other things. So many players are real tough guys against the dummy, but in content, they either can't replicate it or they just die constantly, and that makes them dead weight. An easier rotation can help you avoid tunnel vision, making you more responsive to mechanics and communicate better with your group. Sure, it can't turn a weak player into a strong one, and the best DDs out there can do all of these things, no matter how complex their rotation is, but in my experience, most of us could use a little extra mental bandwidth. If you still need convincing, the Major Berserk from the Atronarch Synergy now hits six people instead of just one. Sorcerer has always lacked group utility, and the Crystal Weapon debuff was one answer to this problem but bringing Major Berserk to the group is way more interesting, especially now that DDs are using proc sets on the back bar and we don't see Kinraz used that often. The buff only lasts 8 seconds, that goes up to 11 if your Rojo healer takes the synergy, but if you've got pillages in the group it comes around again pretty fast, and with multiple Sorks dropping it on cooldown the uptime starts to add up. This is one reason we could use more Sorks in serious content. 
Speaking of pillages, sorcerers benefit disproportionately from this set becoming standardized. More Atronarchs means more Major Berserk for the group. But also, because we don't have an ultigen passive and we just get cheaper ultimates, the boost from pillagers is comparatively more valuable and boosts our damage more than everyone else's, especially if we're using Daedric Prey properly. And that brings us to the first trick I was talking about, which is Daedric Prey. This is nothing new, it's been a core Sork ability for years, but in update 35 they lowered the damage from Sork pets and made it more dependent on Daedric Prey being active. People were crying about this on the forums at the time, but they hadn't bothered to test or read the patch notes properly, because the buff from Prey got increased from 20% to 45%, which more than made up for the damage loss. And it made the class inherently more rewarding to play, since it's more dependent on player input. Some people might disagree with that, especially if they're used to a certain playstyle, and that's fine, but for me this was a good change. Damage also went up. Like I said, Magicka Sorcerer doesn't tend to get bad patches, but it wasn't really an outlier before update 35, then it suddenly jumped up the rankings, despite having one of the easiest rotations in the game. No one really talked about this at the time, because the update 35 patch cycle was such a car crash that it blotted out everything else for a while. I decided to make this video back then, but unfortunately I was too busy building our new website, ninjapools.com by the way, plug plug, to finish it earlier. The point is, Daedric Prey is now low-key one of the strongest abilities in the game. When designing a rotation, the main thing I look at is damage per cast, not just damage per second. To give you a few examples, with a typical setup and buffs, Stalking Blast Bones at melee range can hit for 81k per cast, or thereabouts. Blazing Spear for 85k if the dot runs its full course. You get 120k from a typical Nightblade bow proc. 114 from Sub Assault, and 87k from a Proct Crystal Fragments. These are just a few examples taken from my testing this patch, and the numbers are not exact, they're all crits for a start, and without sets like Sororia or Riptide to skew the numbers, but they give you a pretty good benchmark as a way to compare the payoff for casting different abilities. And that's what a rotation is. Daedric Prey is tricky to measure. The ability itself only hits for 60k, that seems incredibly low, compared to something like Power of the Light, which works in a similar way and hits 110k with the same setup. Almost twice as much. But remember, Prey buffs our pets by 45%. So if you add up all the damage from the Scamp, the Twilight, the Atronarch, and more of the Infernal, Daedric Prey is responsible for almost a third of that. That's assuming your Prey uptime is close to 100%, which it should be. That raises the damage per cast up to about 140k. And that's just on average. If all the pets are active at once, including the Atronarch and more, we're talking well over 200k per cast, which is nuts. So I'm making the case that Daedric Prey should be prioritized above anything else. When something is that strong, it's smart to base your entire rotation around it. Chop it into six second segments and never miss a cast. Most Sorks probably do this already, but it's good to have the numbers giving you extra incentive, and it also gives the rotation a nice, repetitive structure. That's the first trick, if trick is the right word. The second one is even easier, but may require some farming. Use Whirl of the Depths on your back bar. Of course, you don't need to do this. My buddy posted a 128k pass in our Discord just the other day using Pillar of Nern. But the static rotation I'm recommending is easier and more reliable, and Whirl is one of the reasons for that. Here's why. Our rotation is 18 seconds, 3 lots of 6 seconds. The cooldown on Whirl is also 18 seconds exactly. We spend almost no time on the back bar with this setup, and Crystal Fragments makes it difficult to bar swap whenever we want, so a really long-lasting proc is perfect. Almost all of our dots, Trap, Hurricane and both pets last 20 seconds. Most players, by the time they've cast 18 abilities, will have taken almost 20 seconds to do it. So this is also kind of perfect. Just look how nice and easy it is. Pre-buff with the pets, Atronarch, Hurricane and Trap, and you're off. Prey, Stampede, Carve and 3 frags. Then Prey again and 5 frags. That's the rhythm, and it's pretty relentless, but it doesn't change. Refresh the pets as your third prey is running out, and trap two. If your weaving is super fast and you're finding that these still have a second or two left, no problem. Just recast them dynamically, later in each rotation. You'll need to bar swap a bit for carve at the start, 
but once you're at 3 stacks it's such a great low maintenance dot and the damage per cast is stupidly high. It's a big reason why I still use a two handed back bar on almost all my DDs. For short fights it's not great, you're probably better off with Scalding Rune, but anything over 40 seconds and I'm probably going to use Carve. Aside from Whirl on the back bar there's nothing special about the build really. Everything into Magicka, Ghastly Eyeball, Essence of Spell Power Potions, Thief Mundus. I'm using two light armor pieces here, but another nice thing about Whirl is that it's a light armor set, so you can increase that if you need more penetration or Magicka sustain. Here I've got Reliquent Body and one piece front bar, Whirl on the jewelry, one piece front bar and two piece back bar, that's six pieces in total, plus Kilt and more of the Infernal. You don't have to follow this exactly, and you can tweak the setup in all kinds of ways, but this is a good baseline to build from. Same with the abilities, they're not set in stone. For example, Mage's Wrath is pretty nice to have as an execute, and a lot of Sorks like to use it. I've tested this on the dummy and in content, and I always get slightly more damage without the execute. So for single target fights, I usually don't bother, but if you're wearing Sogvin or you've got adds in execute, then I would probably go with Wrath on the front bar. Entirely up to you but the rotation is definitely simpler without it, and sustain is a little easier as well. The obvious drawback with this rotation is that we get 3 seconds of downtime on Stampede. That's a DPS loss for sure, but with all the benefits we get from a static 18 second rotation, I think the trade off is worth it. It also makes stamina sustain easier, since Stampede is pretty expensive. By the way, when I keep saying how easy this is, I'm not saying you suck if you can't hit these numbers. Fast weaving takes practice, for one thing. I'm just trying to persuade you guys that this sort of DPS is more attainable than you might think. So if you've been playing ESO for a while and you know how a rotation works, you should definitely go for it. I really like this rotation. Not least because I'm always class hopping and I'm often raid leading as well. For me, the whole point of a static rotation is to let your muscle memory do all the work. So you can focus on mechanics, positioning, callouts, or just shooting the breeze and having fun with your friends. Whatever. This gives us so much for free. Perfect uptime on Prey, perfect uptime on Whirl, which hits harder as the number of targets increase. And you can go as static or dynamic as you like, so there's plenty of room for improvement once you get used to it. But as always, I'm not telling anyone how to play. Do whatever you feel like, especially if you're already getting comparable damage with your Magsork. But if you're stuck under 125k, or you haven't played Magsork in a while, I think you'd be mad not to try this. I hope this video was useful. There's a mini guide linked in the description, and more info at ninjapools.com. And if you enjoyed the video and the guides, please like, subscribe, and share. It really helps us grow the channel. Thanks for watching.